the description of the storm um, is, is very self-consciously playing around with the idea that epic needs storms. Um, and so the description is very, very vivid, very um, immediate. Um, but we also get this sense of different different levels of focus. Um, so we start off with the, the kind of the broad um, panoramic view of the storm breaking out and the winds coming down and blowing the sea and whipping it up into, into mountains of water. Um, and then from there, we kind of zoom into the, uh, the focus on Aeneas on the ship, making his speech of despair. Um, and then we cut back out to this enormous kind of tides surging everywhere and the winds blowing um, and this this is this kind of movement between the large and the small um, is very much reflecting uh, the way in which we're supposed to see the storm as on the one hand representing big things representing the way that epic poet poems sh should go um, but, and, and representing the way in which Aeneas's journey, the plot of the whole poem, is going to be changed by what happens here. Uh, but also, it is an event which has an impact on an individual um, and a relevance to him. So we're getting this sort of movement in and out. Then as you go on through the description of the storm, um, we, we come to the, the ideas of the effects of the storm and how the ships or some of the ships get broken up um, and you start seeing pe people kind of presum presumably drowning um, and, and whole kind of fragments of the ship and indeed some of the treasures which they've managed to take with them from Troy floating on top of the waves. And again, it's a similar idea of um, moving inwards to, from, from a kind of broad focus on the, the wild elements to this sort of specific human tragedy and human consequences of what's of what's happened but even there in stylistic terms we're getting this 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 shift so alongside a change of focus um, on landscape and character if you like we're also getting a a change of uh, modes of telling the story so at one point Virgil will, will seem very kind of wrapped up in giving us the most vivid possible description of the storm and then at the next there's a more kind of distanced sense to him describing things giving us background information which we don't strictly need um, for the scene itself to work so an example of this is is the point where um, he talks about the ship starting to founder on the, on the rocks and then he has this little bit in, in a modern text that's put in brackets even to sort of show how it is an aside um, that saying oh well these these are the rocks which the Italians call um, call the altars um, and and this is this is clearly not relevant for Aeneas uh, it doesn't really matter for the plot but there's a way in which um, it matters to Virgil because uh, his epic is not just about telling this story it's about connecting the story to the future of Rome and to the way that the Romans of, of his day um, look at the connections between themselves and the past so what for us in some ways might seem to be a bit of an interruption to the description of the storm um, is actually part of the way in which uh, Virgil throughout the Aeneid is trying to knit together past and present um, and knit together these different kinds of focus uh, from the very kind of immediate and dramatic through to a much more kind of cool and analytical uh, approach.